Hello everyone, my name is Fidaos Mudaso and I'm a service person at Ghana Senior High School in Tamale. Today we are going to do a very interesting topic and the name is farming system. So to today's topic, we are going to talk about the various farming systems in Ghana. At the end of today's lesson, students should be able to understand the various farming systems that we have in Ghana. As well, students should be able to tell the differences that exist between these farming systems and also state the advantages as well as the disadvantages of these farming systems that we have in Ghana. So to the farming system, first of all, we have monoculture. Mono means one, and culture refers to something that has been repeatedly done till it becomes part and parcel of a particular group of people's life. So when we talk about monoculture as a system of farming, we mean that a farmer takes a particular food crop and then specialize in it and farm it year after year. Mostly, it is the staple food of the community where the farmer lives. For instance, maize is a staple food crop in northern region. So there are some farmers who farm maize every year. So if you should see that the farmer is farming maize this year, you expect to come to the farm next year and still see that the farmer is cultivating the same crop that is made. When that happens, we say that the farmer is practicing a system of farming known as the monoculture. We also have monocropping. Monocropping is similar to that of monoculture, though they are not the same. In monocropping, the farmer also cultivates just one type of crop, but the farmer is at liberty to change the crop year upon year. For instance, if the farmer realizes that after cultivating maize this year, the market of maize was affected by some factors, so he didn't get profit from the maize, he's likely to change, for instance, yam the following year. Or if there was low yield of maize, or the land that he tilled the maize did not favor a higher production or yield of maize, then the farmer, as a rational farmer, is likely to cultivate a different crop the next year. So when that happened, that a farmer cultivates one type of crop this year, and then changes that particular crop the next year, then we say that the farmer is practicing monocropping. So students, the only difference with monoculture and monocropping is that for monoculture, the farmer sticks to a particular crop year after year. But for monocropping, the farmer changes it based on the economics, based on the yield, based on the profitability, or just based on the farmer's will or curiosity to try other crops. If there is a situation whereby a particular pest attack a particular food crop like maize, the farmer can decide to change the food crop so as to reduce the presence of that pest. But if the farmer continues with the monoculture, then the pest might destroy the farm crops. Also, we have the ecological farming system. Like the name implies, ecological. It's a logical system of farming, whereby the environment is protected. So in this system of farming, the farmer doesn't only concentrate on profitability, the farmer as well concentrates on sustaining the environment so that future generation can also come and then use the environment. So this system of farming ensures that organic substances such as organic what? Fertilizer are those that are used to increase the nutrients available for the plants. 
The farmer doesn't use artificial what, fertilizers because some of these artificial fertilizers, especially when they are highly concentrated, can lead to toxicity and then kill the plants or kill the living organisms that are present in the soil. And we understand that the living organisms perform a lot of relevant functions in the soil, such as the fact that they help in aeration, they also help in the soil structure as well as the soil texture. Among other activities, some of the organisms such as Nitrobacter in the root nodules of leguminous crops, such as beans, also help in nitrogen fixation. And we know that nitrogen is one of the macronutrients which help in the growth and development of crops. So in ecological system of farming, the farmer tries to plant trees or use cover crops and undertake activities that are suitable for the protection of the environment. So that is it with ecological farming. The advantage is that the environment is well taken off for future generations to also benefit. To our fourth system of farming, we have the shifting cultivation. Shifting what? Cultivation. As the name implies, shifting. It means the farmer moves from one place to the other. In shifting cultivation, the farmer, however, doesn't only move alone, but he moves with his family or his settlement from one place to another. It is worthy of mentioning that this system of farming doesn't take place nowadays because of land tenure system or simply because of the scarcity of land. In the olden days, however, there were plenty of land resources. So farmers could farm on a particular piece of land and when they realized that the nutrients available in that particular soil has depleted, then they leave it, move along with their family to a different settlement and then farm afresh. This system of farming has a disadvantage of destroying the virgin forest or the vegetation. Because what happens is that when the farmer goes to a new area, he doesn't find the soil at that particular new area suitable for farming. He would have to clear the bushes or the vegetation before he can what? Farm. And in doing so, he destroyed the natural environment, he destroyed the landscape, and he also destroyed the micro organism in the soil but it has an advantage because it is less expensive and then the farmer would allow the land to follow that is a natural way by which the farm will regain its fertility land following just that the farmer will not go back to the land even when it regains its fertility so that is regarding shifting cultivation. We also have land rotation. When we say rotation, we mean that you move something in a circular manner, for instance, but in a definite order. In a precise order, you don't rotate something haphazardly. Hazardly. No, you do it in a definite order or cycle. So land rotation, what happens is that the farmer has different plots of land. On the same piece of land, the farmer has different plots, like plot A, plot B, C, and then D. So the farmer farms on plot A for some period of time. When the nutrient is depleted in plot A, then the farmer moves to plot B. However, when the nutrients also depletes here then he moves to C. Likewise when the move nutrient here is not adequate for the growth of plants again then he moves to plot D. When the farmer realizes that the nutrients available here cannot sustain the growth of plants then he comes back to plot A. 
And the reason is that by the time the farmer moves to plot A, plot A would have regained his nutrient because plot A has been left to follow for some number of years, like three years, four years, or a longer period of time. So this is regarding land rotation. So the difference between shifting cultivation and land rotation is that for shifting cultivation, the farmer moves with the settlement and he has no intention of going back to the previously left land, even though it has followed. For land rotation, the farmer has an intention of going back to the previously tilled land after it has gained ease fertility or is nutrient back so that is basically the difference we also have crop rotation crop rotation in crop rotation what happens is that the crops are planted in a definite cycle and then they are rotated following a particular sequence for instance, we may have a table like this, whereby the farmer may farm cassava, and then tomato, and then we have the farmer may also farm, you know, cabbage, and then granules. There are several rules that the farmer must take into consideration before planning this rotation cycle. It is not done haphazardly. First of all, plants that belong to the same family, they should not follow each other. Plants that are affected by the same pests and parasites or diseases should not also follow each other. Shallow-rooted crops should be followed by deep-rooted crops. And leguminous crops should be part of the what, cycle as well, there should be a fallow period to help the soil regenerate its nutrients. So, for instance, if you are constructing a crop rotation cycle with the listed items, cassava, tomato, cabbage, and then granules, you would bring the granules to the first, the last you bring it first, so we now have granules. So, the crop rotation cycle has an advantage of the addition of nitrogen which helps in greening the plant leaves as well as helps in the growth and then development of the plant also we mentioned that there is a fallow period in the crop rotation cycle so this fallow period helps the soil through the natural process to regain its lost fertility also, since it is a crop rotation program and different crops are planted, it means that at the end of a harvesting period, the farmer can rely on different types of crops. If the yield of this crop is not enough, then the other crops can compensate for it. And if there are diseases that affect a particular crop, eventually it might not affect the rest of the crops and the farmer can still depend on the yield of these crops that are unaffected for survival. Oh, but it also has some disadvantages. One of the disadvantages of this crop rotation is that it requires skills. The farmer needs to be adequately informed about how to plan this rotation program so as to have a very successful crop rotation cycle. Let's go to some other aspects of the farming systems we have. We also have the mixed cropping. In mixed cropping, the farmer farms different types of crops, different crops on the same piece of land. And mostly this is done at the backyard. So you see a, 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 a a man or someone has a, a, a backyard and then he cultivates different types of crops on that particular piece of yard. When that happens, then we say that the person is practicing a system of farming known as the mixed crop. And it means that he is bringing different types of crops. It has advantage like a crop rotation. If this crop fails, then the farmer can depend on the other crops. And if this crop are affected by this particular pest, we can be sure that this particular crop can survive that particular pest. 
Also, we have mixed farming. We know that farming basically involves the rearing of animals and then the cultivating of crops. So basically, mixed cropping, mixed farming takes place when the farmer rears animals as well as cultivate crops on the same piece of land. The advantage with this particular farming system is that the animals will drop their manure, which can be used as a form of organic fertilizer for the growth and then development of the crops. So it's actually a mutualistic system whereby the crops benefit from the animals through the droppings of the animals which they use as manure or fertilizer for their groups. The crops, after they have been harvested and their shells are left or their remains are left, are also used to feed the animals. So in this system, the animals will benefit from the crops and the crops benefit from the animals. And eventually it is the farmer who wins. Because the money that would have been spent to buy fertilizers would now be saved for other activities since the farmer can generate organic fertilizer from the animals. Also, the amount of money that would have been spent on feeding the animals would eventually reduce because the farmer can rely on the remains of the plants for that. So basically, these are some of the advantages of mixed farming. So the difference between the mixed cropping, the farmer farms different types of crops on the same piece of land. But for mixed farming, the farmer farms crops and then animals on the same piece of land. Thank you very much for joining us in this particular session. We look forward to having the next session with you. Take care.